What's up peeps? Welcome back to another episode of Five Questions with Frank and today I am truly grateful to be sitting here with Claude Silver. She's the Chief Heart Officer at VaynerMedia. We're sitting here at Vayner's office right now. I've had the opportunity to meet Claude several times and um, last time I was here I had a, a brain dump on Claude and kind of poured my life story out to her. Today I get to flip the script on that and get a peek into a little bit of her life. So this is going to be really exciting and Claude thanks so much for being on. That's amazing. Amazing to be here, and that last meeting we had was the best. It was juice. I mean, it kind of juiced me for 2019. Oh, good, because I walked away from it. Honestly, I walked away, and I felt like like I robbed our time together, honestly. So I was like, man, I had this opportunity to sit with you, and all I did was pour stuff out on you. And for a couple weeks after that, I was like, kind of regretting. I, I felt good because I felt like, wow, I never, I talked about stuff that I've never talked about with anyone. But um, what was really great was that, like, I felt like a release, but then I was like, oh, I, you know, I didn't get to ask you questions. And I kind of felt like I was one-sided. So I'm glad that we're here again. <laughs> I didn't feel that way, but I hear you and I'm so glad we're here. All right. So uh, before we get going, what we I'd love for the audience to really understand is just to, for them to give a glimpse in the day of life of Claude Silver, uh, you know, what makes you tick? Yeah, right on. So um, I have a 16 month old daughter. So A, she makes me tick, but B, that's a huge day in the life for me because I wake up and the day starts. As you know, having kids, your time is no longer your time. Um, she's, you know, adorable, she's strong, she's like super, uh, you know, she's got a will of her own and uh, she wants to play all the time. So basically that's how my day starts which is around six at six or whatever. Anyway, I end up I end up coming into work and this is, I don't know, I love coming in here because for me it's like game on. I know what I'm I know what my day might look like. It will meander and and and, and go in every which way, but I know I'll be with people. And that's what makes me tick. Being with people, holding space, really helping someone remove their roadblocks. Uh, helping someone decode something here, connecting people to one another so that they can really be their greatest like self. If they're an art director, they can be their, you know, they can come up with some amazing concept. If you're in the back office, cool. Like you've learned to manage someone. Um, I love the art of being with a person. So you mentioned uh, uh, creating, holding space. So it was something that I didn't know what that was. I've heard you say it a few times. You basically held space with me last time I was here. So I was, uh, yeah. I, I, I know it firsthand. Um, so hold and, and, and so holding space, can you just give a little little backdrop into kind of what that is just for the audience? Because I feel like, I, I don't know if you made that term up um, or, or you coined that term, but I've never heard it until you said it. And I feel like it's something that we can all learn from. Yeah. Um, I love the term. I didn't come up with it. I probably learned it 30 years ago in some class on Buddhism or something like that. Uh, so cer certainly psychology and holding space is really in a non-judgmental way, just kind of opening up the room, opening up for whatever happens in a conversation. Uh, that means active listening. That means we can just be with one another and can take off our masks mm -hmm. because there's a safety, there's a connection, um, there's no one-upping or competition in the room. It's just like, I'm here for you and you're, you're good here. I got you right now. Got it. And so that's what holding space is and, and that's what I really, that's what I enjoy doing. And I really, truly believe we can we can all learn from from trying that in our own lives. So thanks for sharing. Yeah. Um, so give us a, a, a you know a, of course we understand now what makes you tick, which is awesome. Um, but how'd you get to be here? You know, I I've learned a little bit about you, um, and and it looks like you found your home here at Vayner, which is awesome. But you didn't just say, hey, one day I want to you know be the chief heart officer. So so kind of give us a backdrop of of the road that got you here, as so, so the audience can. Kind of understand where Claude came from. Yeah, totally. So, um, no, I had no idea that I would land here and be the chief heart officer. However, I feel like I've always been this person, and I have an enormous title that I'm, uh, you know, I have the honor of, of carrying every single day. The, you know, who I am here is who I am outside, is who I was 10 years ago, 30 years ago, and I 
I'm a, I'm a people person while being a little bit introverted as well. I started on a journey into figuring out myself and my, you know, my crap uh, after some big old falls and, and scraping my knees pretty damn hard. And I decided that I wanted to go all in on figuring out why I had certain tendencies, like self-destructive tendencies or tendencies to doubt myself and all of that stuff. And that took me on a really long journey, and I think I'm still on that journey. But that started in my early 20s. And, um, and it was then that I actually realized that being in community and connection is really where so much healing comes from. Uh, and with the healing comes possibility and comes like magic and and you just realize like you're not alone in the world mm -hmm. because when one thinks they're alone in the world it's it's freaking it's isolating man yeah. yeah and that's that's not what I want to be about so um, anyway I had no business at all getting into the world of advertising and marketing I was a psychology major studied to be a psychotherapist. And it was 1998, I was in San Francisco, it was a dot-com boom, the first one. And I got a job at a, um, at a dot-com company. And the rest really was history. And from there I went into different advertising agencies and I knew that I was good with people and so I was account facing. And one day I, I moved to the strategy department where it was really, I found my home in strategy and really figuring out the why for consumers and figuring out kind of the aha for consumers and and how a certain product could give you know a mom and turkey peace of mind you know that kind of stuff um, just advertising and and uh, along the way I always had these large teams that I I took care of I was the shirt before I was the you know the guide the coach for and and the mentor and that is really what was feeding me the entire time yes it was really fun figuring out what kind of you know, toothpaste we should we should sell to um, moms in Russia and and things like that. But what really made me tick was like doing it with someone. Um, so anyway, that is a long way of saying. Actually, I stopped in. I should say, we're gonna cut here for a second. Okay. All right. Because I, I wanted to tell you about the surfing company. Okay. Um, in right after 9-11 I had gotten laid off in San Francisco for the second time which many of us did just due to the, the, the tragedy of, of what was going on and a friend of, friend of mine uh, and myself we started an outdoor adventure surfing company in San Francisco so uh, we had that for five years I taught surfing 275 days a year wow. I had that, you know, that <laughs> killer tan neck up wrist down because you're wearing like thick you know 4.3 uh, millimeter wetsuits and and coaching people and, and watching people do something that scared them and yet they did it and maybe they fell on their face but they still did it. That gave me so much joy and pride and I just love like being like, yes, high five, you got up on that wave, mm -hmm. you know? High five, you climbed that hill, whatever. Um, anyway, we sold that company and then I, you know, I, I went back into what I knew, which was advertising agencies and, you know, doing a little bit of a, a jump here in, um, uh, I was living in San Francisco, uh, I was living actually in London and I had known who Gary was and I got introduced to him by my best friend and we hit it off and then he moved me to New York and I started at VaynerMedia in May of 2014. So I'm going on year six, mm. and I didn't start as a chief heart officer. We didn't have a chief heart officer. We didn't really have HR. Yeah. Um, Gary saw that I really loved being with people and that uh, people seemed to really gravitate towards me and enjoy their time with me and, and what we did together. And one thing led to another, and um, four years ago we created this role, chief heart officer. So. That was a very long meander, but you know I'm 50, so it's been a long meander. Although I feel like I'm usually about 18. Yeah, oh, well, that's great. I know, and so that's a perfect way to get on to the next question because you, four years ago you created this role. You get to work with I don't know how many thousand people or so that are, are part of VaynerMedia. You get to actually interact with not only the team. But people outside of that, I know you speak a lot. I know you're, you, this, you do other podcasts. 
you invite people like me in, into your life um, to ask you a question. So you get to learn. You are an amazing listener. So you get to learn a lot. What what advice would you give to someone who, let's say, they're stuck? They feel like I can never do that. I'm, I'm not. A, they're they're in the gate and they need to start, but they've been waiting there either for ten minutes or ten years. Yeah. So I love the question because it's one I have to ask myself too. Like over and over and over again, whether or not it's like, why didn't I work out or, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm a human too. So I, I, the first answer is the obvious answer, which is just start. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's silly to say that because it's not that easy. And I recognize that. So what I would say is find an accountability partner or some kind of support team that will help you get you out of the gate. And, and literally it's like, um, snowboarding, right? I started snowboarding a, a so long ago, <laughs> and I remember I was 15, and my brother uh, took me on some like wild cliff, and the only way to get down, you could not walk down. The only way to get down was to snowboard down. I snowboarded down on my ass, <laughs> which is fine, but I got down. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, I did cry. I cried quite mm -hmm. a bit before, but that was his way of being like, "You got this, girl. Like, mm -hmm. go." So having support, having friends, having people that are going to help you just get one foot out the door is super helpful. I think that's the first thing. I think the second thing, and this goes to what Gary talks about quite a bit, is when you start to look at your warts, you will find warts. So don't look. Mm -hmm. Like focus in on your strengths. If you want to be listening to people all day then start a podcast or, or, or be a teacher or be a guidance counselor or whatever that is if you want to make art all day then get a canvas buy some paint the warts will be there if you look for them yeah. and i see them every single day myself so i do my best to focus in on my strengths and that's what i would i would say is the best thing remind yourself of what you are exceptional at and, and usually what you're exceptional at is also what your joy is. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a, a ton of great information there, uh, which I really appreciate. But again, you go to the, the next question I have for you. Again, you get to, you get to work with all these people. You, you get to speak with so many people and, and as being the, the listener that you are, what is the fuel that keeps you going? What you jump out of bed, at, and I know you, you've got your daughter. Who, of course, I have my my daughter's going to be eight. I, she, she's the best thing ever. So get she gets me going. I understand that that you hit the ground running, but you keep going. Four years into this heart officer role, six years here at Vayner Media. What is like? What is it that is that keeps you saying, "Hey, I want to I want to continue doing this," and this is this is it for me. Yeah. That question is uh, really easy for me mm -hmm. to answer because my purpose is to be of service. There is no day in my life that I have not known that. It's a matter of how I could be in service. Mm -hmm. And so what jazzes me every day is knowing that I'm going to get the opportunity to be with people and, and guide them, you know, coach them, dare I say help them to to take that leapfrog onto that next lily pad or to be able to see themselves in a different light or be able to get super clear with themselves. So you know, my purpose is really to be of joyful service and uh, my Nana's was the same. Mm. You know, I gotta tell you something though, for so long I felt that that was too big and that, oh Claude, you couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Like you really should just stay in your lane and staying in my lane bummed me out and staying in my lane was not big enough for my wings and finding this purpose and, and landing on it and knowing that it's something that makes me tick and lights me up every single day and in turn lights other people up is what jazzes me every day every day it's not a, it's not a question and if i'm not here at vaynermedia doing it i'm doing it outside or I'm writing something on LinkedIn or chatting with someone. Uh, and in those introspective moments, in those moments that I need to time out, you know, I'm, I, and I'm not with my family, my daughter, I have music on. Mm -hmm. and, and that, and music is what guides me all the way. All the way. Well, since you threw it out there, what's in the playlist? 
Um, Snow Patrol is something that's been on repeat right mm -hmm. now a lot for me. Um, I'm a big cure head, you know, I've made, made no bones about that. I'm like, you know, I think I've seen some Instagram stories. <laughs> yeah, take me back to the 80s. Um, but I have random playlists constantly. Mm -hmm. So like right now, you said, what's my playlist? And I was like, oh, Everlong by mm -hmm. Foo Fighters. I mean, no, it's not, but yeah. now it is yeah. in, my, in my brain. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we know. Um, so on the flip side of what keeps you going and the fuel and everything, because those are obviously amazing things that um, you spreading your wings and really finding what, what it is that makes you tick. Um, what's something that you see a lot, you get to work with so many people that if you can, if you had pixie dust, if you had a magic wand, you know, Claude could go like this and it would be fixed. What is, what is something that you would change if you could? Yeah. I really want to start this revolution of tenderness and this revolution of kindness. Um, that is what I would fix immediately. I, I believe that we would, we wouldn't have wars. Mm -hmm. We would have he healthy competition, but not aggressive competition. Uh, we wouldn't have domestic abuse. We would have just people that knew how to be there for one another and want to champion one another. So this idea of spreading tenderness and kindness, you know, in my pixie dust is something that I am, I'm wedded to until my last breath. You do it. Um, I, I see a lot of it, and, and you are pretty active on LinkedIn. You've got um, your your podcast that I, I've got to uh, listen to. They're nice, short. Uh, <laughs> they're like <laughs> yeah, just, but they're good. They're minutes. bite size. Um, and then uh, you're pushing you know information out and allowing people into your your life and, and on site, inside Instagram too. So so I feel like these are ways people are drawn to you, and you have the opportunity to reach the masses, um, especially through social media. So. So yeah, I, I hope that um, that magic wand or that pixie dust gets waved someday. Uh, I'd love to see that. Where where are we going? If I, I love the, this part of the show is my favorite because I get you get a chance to pontificate, a chance to kind of look out into the future. Where are we going? Um, and let's maybe five, ten years from now, what do you what do you see? Um, and and what is your what what is your vision or, or, or your your again just a chance to pontificate? What's coming? Yeah, first of all, I hope in five or 10 years I can spell the word pontificate. <laughs> that would be really good if I could do that. Um, so I see the pixie dust starting to fly in five to 10 years. And of course I'm an optimist, so mm. I'm really gonna say that. And that internally in organizations, we become uh, more human and we take down our masks and we let one another in because as I've already said, when you break down, break down the walls and become vulnerable and let someone in, like the connection is just there and mm -hmm. you can make magic together. More than that, you can be successful. So businesses want to be successful and who drives businesses is the human being. So I definitely see within organizations that we will become more human. This role of you know, HR, people and experience as I call it, will be, will be common. It will be a commonality that you've got people in position who are there to hold space and mm -hmm. coach and guide rather than be on the defense of no, 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 no. It'll be yes, 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 yes. And uh, so those are things I, I see happening. And I really feel like, you know, I'm a mom now. So mm -hmm. I want this world to be a safer world for my daughter and your daughter. Uh, I want this world to be a kinder world and I want people to be free to, to be adventurous. That's, that's, what I, that's what I want. Mm. People to be able to spread their wings, know that they are taken care of in the collective um, and they can, they can soar as high as they possibly want to go while being a good person. Well, that is not only deep, but also I feel we we all need to contribute to that. I, I, again, there's there's if we can all like look towards that. There's a a starfish story. There's a little boy he's walking along the beach, and he's, there's a bunch of starfish that are washed upon the beach, and he's throwing one in at a time. And there's thousands of them, and there's an old man who says, "You're not going to make a difference." You know, there's so many of them, and he picks up one and he throws it back into the ocean, and he says, "I just made a difference in that one." 
So it's a yeah. whole premise of, you know, we, we think that there's this big world out there. How can I possibly do something that's going to make the difference? But it's, it, you do that and you have that mentality and you start and you make the difference. Someone else can too. So, so yeah. I feel like we all need to have that mindset to say, I can. Yeah. And can I say, just piggybacking on that, mm. you know, in, in your darkest moments, all you need is for another person to light a match. Mm. So be a match for someone else. Like hold a candle for someone else. When it's feeling dark and gloomy and, and, and your desperation is high, ask a friend to light a match or just find the match and light it yourself. That's, that is what we can be doing for people. We can all be the match. Yeah. I like it. Um, so where people are tuning in, they, they really are, maybe they never heard of you and now they're like, wow. Um, where do they find you? Where, where can, can someone seek you out? Uh, well, VaynerMedia, but um, uh, LinkedIn and Instagram and Twitter, and I'm re really, really active on those, uh, and I write back to everyone that writes me. It might mm -hmm. take me a little bit of time, but yeah. Um, but I, I love hearing from people, and and I think I'm really interested in like you know who you were a match for, like who who you holding that candle for. Good, great. Well, really appreciate you taking some time, not only for me, but for here for the audience. Thank you. Um, this was a, a really, really great experience for me, and I'm glad I, I get to share a little bit. I get get to take that back and, and share with the audience because I know you are, you're amazing. I met you at, a, at an HR event um, in 2018, and it was a snowstorm, and I wasn't supposed to go, and it was like all this chaos. We, I had saw you. Um, that was that was the second time, but you saw me and you were like, "Hey, Frank!" and you gave me this hug, and I was like, "I can't believe she remembered me." Um, so it was cool because I feel like, yeah, I, the, the couple times I met you, there's this energy. Um, I know you wear red a lot, and I'm a huge <laughs> fan of red. I got my red yeah. sneaks on. You were wearing you know. red. That's yeah, funny. I'm always red, and that's yeah. my color. But I just, you know, there's something about you know the heart and all that stuff. So, so yeah, I really, um, I feel like there's just something about you, and I, I know I'm not alone. So I really hope that. People will seek you out um, and, and they can learn from you. And I really do appreciate your time today. Thanks, man. Thank you.